to the TriStar Gym channel. I'm happy to report we are straight out of quarantine. New shirts out already and we are on the mat. Everybody is vaccinated. Everybody is in pods of four. We're following all the rules. So police, please, no need to come to the gym and break down my door. We are following the rules. We have uh, uh, followed the rules to the letter. So now we are back finally. Happy to announce we are back finally wrestling. Here's me with an underhook. You guys are watching this channel for a long time. You know I'm going to shuck. It's my favorite move. I'm going to get the the underhook. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to shuck. Let's take a quick look at that. And I think this is one of the best moves in wrestling. Okay, When you have an underhook, uh, you want to keep your head. There are exceptions to this, but you want to keep your head and underhook on the same side. Okay, So I have my head on his uh, right side and my underhook on his right side. And this is going to protect me from getting my arm uh, wrenched. Okay, I know there's a popular video out there. Uh, Sean Strickland get, is getting his arm wrenched in, in practice. And this is one way to prevent it. And one thing that I'm always constantly doing is I'm constantly flaring this elbow up and out. Okay, create tension on his arm to make sure that he doesn't wrench my arm. Okay, but mainly, you see me moving back here. Mainly, one thing, the way I protect myself is when I get an underhook, I don't, sometimes I will drive forward, but right here, you, you saw me stepping backwards. I'm pulling him. Okay, I'm pulling pulling with that underhook. Let me re rewind that right here. Okay, so I get that underhook. I can drive forward or I can pull. But one thing I don't want to do is lay static. If I lay static, I can get my arm wrenched. Okay, so you see me pulling backwards and then I might change direction and go forward. I'm creating motion. I get an underhook. I'm creating motion. I'm pulling. I'm driving forward. There it is. There's the shuck. I get to the waist. I love the shuck because it's such a low energy maneuver and uh, I find it doesn't risk your head in the guillotine. It doesn't fatigue you. There's me attempting a leg drag. And here we are. We have, my partner has a Z-guard. This is a very good option. What's maybe hard to see on the video is that this is a hot summer night, very humid here in Montreal, super, super humid. So very difficult for us to uh, do Torianos and things like that. The Z-guard is a very, very good option when, when things are sweaty like that. Um, when my partner puts me in a Z-guard, one thing I like to do is I like to grab the upper arm and kind of dominate it, okay? There's uh, me trying to shuck his leg free. I'm having a difficulty uh, putting weight on him. Because of that Z-Guard, he's doing a very, very good job here protecting himself with Z-Guard. Here's me attacking the upper arm. I want to turn it into a Dars or I want to turn it into an underhook for me or a guillotine. Those are the three things I'm, I'm pretty much looking for here. Okay, and also when I control that arm, I'm stopping him from spinning underneath me. Here my partner's trying a twist. Here I'm going into a body lock. Now body locking, in my opinion, is the best way to pass a, a guard when things are sweaty like this, okay? If my opponent has no shirt, or it's an MMA scenario, I love to go to body lock. Okay, so here's my body lock attempt, and my partner does the smart thing and goes to full guard. Whenever somebody tries to body lock past you, put your full guard on immediately, okay? Especially if they got on top of you is big and strong and athletic. It's a very difficult thing to deal with when somebody gets a body lock around your waist. It is a very powerful maneuver for the top man. Jump to guard, make your way back to guard, and then reassess from there. Here my partner is back to Z guard. You're probably gonna see me, I'm gonna knee slide right here. I'm gonna explode into a knee slide and there's that guillotine slash darts attempt. Okay, I like to jump to the neck when my partner goes to Z guard. And there, you're gonna get them to turtle up. Okay, this is great. This is some back exposure now. You can shoot to the back. My partner does a very good job of hiding his back here. I'm gonna go underhook pass. I, I pin the ankle. Whenever you can do, whenever you can pin an ankle to the mat, just like this, okay? Don't think about it, just do it. Okay, if it's ever available, this is exactly what you want to do. You want to pin the ankle to the mat, and then you want to pin your knee on top of his knee. It's that simple, okay? Don't worry about what you're going to do next. Don't worry about uh, follow-ups. Whenever you can pin an ankle to the mat, especially in this fashion here, and you can pin his knee with your knee, these two combos, okay? These, these, these two elements here. You have one and you have two. Don't think about it. Just do it, okay? It always leads to something good. It's very bad for the man on the bottom. And here I am, I start to do an underhook pass, over under pass, and I'm going to the waist again. My partner is really is a re really strong guy, very good leg lock here, attempt. He's going to double trouble, this is great. The thing is, when things are this sweaty, leg locks are very hard to do. Okay, so you're going to see me like uh, just probably pull my leg out, it's so difficult. I don't know how if you guys are able to see it very much on the camera, but this is a very, very hot and humid night at uh, TriStar Gym. There it is, I just got to pull my leg out. It's not, it's not very overly technical, it's just like... The circumstance allows for an easy escape, okay? It would be very hard to square leg lock in this uh, humidity. Here I am again. I'm probably going to try to punch in another underhook. Um, you guys know I love the underhook. There's a snap down, actually. My partner's going to sit. There is the underhook on the right side. And now my partner kind of pulled guard, but because I have the head control and the underhook, I'm easily going to be able to pass, okay, as he pulls guard. That's not the time you want to pull guard. 
Okay, you want to be careful with that. When you're in that situation, uh, let me rewind it right here. Whenever you're in this type of situation, uh, as my partner's in right now, your head's down, I would try to sumigeshi or slide to an ashigurami, okay, into a leg lock attempt here. Here, you just kind of sat down and kind of uh, try to pull guard, okay, which is a really bad idea, in my opinion, because he did a really good job protecting himself from guard earlier on. But just pulling guard like that, guys are just going to toriando. They're just going to step to the side, okay? It's very, very difficult. When you want to sit guard, you have to have some contact with his leg and preferably using your leg, using your leg to contact his leg before you sit, okay, or as you sit. But there, you know, it's expected to, the, the, the man on top is going to go toriando immediately. Here I go with a lat trap, okay, one of my favorite, favorite moves. You guys know this well. Uh, jujiclub.com check out the side control uh, control freak video I just released I go over it in detail I go over spiral pressure uh, in detail you guys are watching my videos often you're gonna see me do these maneuvers over and over again um, the details are not not too complicated but they're not that simple either okay you really need to get to the key details to make it work consistently for you all right we're back in guard my partner is shrimping and I'm probably gonna do another knee slide here it looks like no, leg drag, leg drag, and let's see here, I'm crowding him. He's doing a very good job defending from guard. Let's see here, he's De La Hiva. I'm backstepping here. And my partner's doing a really good job turtling back. Here's another underhook pass here. I'm probably going to go to the waist. There it is. There's that right underhook. Let me rewind right here. This is a really important little sequence here. My partner's inverting again. Okay, so he's doing the same maneuver he did earlier. Watch how I deal with it this time. I'm going to underhook his leg with my left arm. I'm going to drag his leg across my body. And now I'm going to start going to the waist here. Underhook my arm around his uh, body and start going to the waist. Once you lock the waist, things can be as slippery as, as they can be. And it's very easy to control your partner. Okay, You want to seat belt him. You want to body lock him. And now I have the back. I'm probably going to go to a collar hitch here. You notice that my partner's off to the side. I don't have a good uh, control over him. Normally, I'd want my sternum to be behind and locked on his spine, aligned with his spine. It's not right now. You can see that I'm off to the side. Whenever I'm in this scenario, I go to a collar hitch. Okay, I also cover that in my Control Freak Back Control Volume 1. This is a very good move. I use this move every day. Every day I roll, every day somebody tries to escape back at the back, I go to the collar hitch. It's a very uh, trusted move. It's a very strong move. You're gonna see my hands shift to this collarbone here. There it is. I shift to the collarbone, and from here I have a lot of choices, okay? Sometimes I mount, sometimes I go katakatami, sometimes I retake the back, sometimes I arm bar, sometimes I flow into leg lock, sometimes I flow into triangle. There's really no uh, limit to what you can do uh, from that angle. Here I'm trying a good katakatami. My partner is a really strong guy. He has his both arms already. He knows that I like katakatami. He saw it coming and he's doing a great job of defending himself here. He's got both arms in the katakatami. I'm probably just going to transition to something else. Here it is me putting the squeeze on him here a little bit, going back to mount, trying to expose his back. Here I'm going to go to guillotine. You guys know I love guillotine. I'm surprised I didn't go for it there. Normally whenever I, I get anywhere near the head, I jump on the neck. Here's my partner coming up on a leg. This is great stuff here. This is very good for him. He's a big, strong guy. He's got my leg here. I'm going for the neck. There it is. I love to go for the guillotine whenever I get a chance. Here's me sprawling. Here I'm probably going to triangle attempt. Triangle attempt here. I'm, I love to do the north roll from here. Here I didn't have my legs uh, in the correct configuration, so I missed the north roll. Hip highs back up. I'm probably going to shoot. Oh, no, my partner sits to guard again. Here's the Z guard. There's the knee slide and Darce attempt. Okay, you got to go to Darce immediately and or establish side control. Typically, when my partner tries to regard, I'll attack the neck, either darts or guillotine. Here, he kind of yielded side control. So, I'm, um, you know, to protect his head. Because if you start shrimping, whenever you start shrimping, he's bringing his knee and head together. That's when I jump on the neck, okay? But here, he's kind of giving me a place to land and establish side control. He's trying to go back to half guard. From here, I'm just being heavy. Time is running out. Let me see the time. Yeah, time is running out. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like, share, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you.